Hello again to everyone at Comvex. Um, I have here something very unique from the Robert Bernardo collection. A recently acquired chalkboard power pad. Uh, this one has been restored to operable condition recently. And, uh, well, this is um, a pretty unique piece of hardware that was only made for um, a year or two, back uh, around 1983. Um, the idea was it, um, it was a way to make using computers easier for children and others uh, by giving them basically a physical GUI. And I'll show you how that works here in a minute. Um, we have here a few of these software packages. You can see they come in very large cases. And the reason for that is because each one contains a Mylar overlay that fits over the chalkboard power pad. And basically gives you icons. So I'll hold that up so you can see it. That uh, you use to control your computer. They made these for um, Atari as well as Commodore 64. You had to get the right software to go with it. They fit in place like this. And they came with a cartridge, or I think some of them came with a disc. Which will only load correctly if you have the power pad plugged in. And it must be plugged into port 1 on the C64. Turn it on. And it's loading. This is a golf game, Leo's Lynx. And it allows you to draw your own golf courses and then play on them. It starts with a demonstration golf course, shows you how the course is drawn. It also has a little bit of audio. This is your hole, the T. It's drawing a water trap right now. I believe. Oh, okay, that's the rough. It does take a little while to draw. But, uh, when you get the hang of it, you can create some pretty challenging courses. You can have one to four players with this game. Let's see. It should draw some traps right now. Okay, that's going to be a sand trap, I think. Okay. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is the green, actually, <laughs> which uh, surprisingly isn't actually green. Behind it is a sand trap. If you are drawing your own course, you have to make sure to close the loop properly, cross the lines on the inside, because if you don't, it'll try to color in the entire screen with uh, the the color of the object that you've chosen. Okay, it's ready to play. You're teed up. So, first you select your club, wood, and the power that you want to use, three. And then you have to set the heading in degrees azimuth. So, from this point here, you need to go uh, however many degrees you think it is azimuth. So, from 0 to 360. And so back from 360 
Let's try somewhere around 300, 305. I'll enter 305 degrees. And enter to swing. It doesn't show your golf club or your swing, it just shows the ball moving. Come on, come on. And we're on the green. Okay, now to put it in, I have to zoom in to the hole. So you hit zoom, and it gives you a cursor which you position with your finger to say between the hole and the ball. Enter, and then you zoom in. Now you use your putter. So, putter, 350 degrees, let's see, power two, and enter, oops, I need a little more power, so putter uh, four, and 350 six degrees enter and that's a what three strokes not bad for an amateur okay and there is also uh, the ability to draw your own courses so you hit design you can clear the screen and select your elements, so the hole, uh, you press the icon for the hole, you can reposition it, and enter, let's see, then let's say you want to add some trees, well, let's see, um, let's first reposition the cursor, so you want to add some trees, somewhere over here and you have to close your loop carefully enter and it fills that area and then goes back to your cursor so you need a green Enter. Okay. Let's add a sand trap over here. And say a water trap. Of course, you can get more creative than this with the shapes and positions. Enter. Okay, and then you hit play, and it tees you up. So you select your club again. Let's say, um, let's do a three wood. Okay, and set heading, azimuth. Zero, so around here is around three, no, um, 240 degrees maybe? 245, let's say. Enter. Oh, I think that was a little off, wasn't it? Um, try that again. Make it, uh, 345. No, better not do that. 300. Enter. Oops. Oh. 3 wood. Okay, that's much better. And we avoided the traps anyway. So far. Okay. And we're going to use an iron here, I think. A 
Okay. Two iron. Set heading. Um, now that's more like 240. 240 degrees. Enter. Oops. Uh, we're off the green now. So it resets you. Okay, so I'm going to try an iron. One iron this time. Set heading. 240 degrees. Enter. Oops, maybe not powerful enough. Two hundred and forty degrees in. Well, you can watch me work my way up to uh, ten strokes on this hole here, or, but you get the idea. And uh, well, if you like, we can look at some other uh, programs that came with this uh, device. Let's see. We have Leo's Electric Paintbrush, which is a painting program. This one says for Atari 400 and 800, but uh, it also came with software for the Commodore, if you got that version. This is what the overlay looks like for it. Um, it gives you all the icons basically that you need for a basic paint program. You've got um, your pen up and pen down buttons, repeat, load, save, cancel, um, asterisk and pound, I'm not sure what those are, clear, uh, to end, enter, fill, background, move, and then your palette, color palette. Uh, let's see. This is what the manual looks like. Chalkboard ink. Manuals are, are really complete. Um, they let you know everything that you need to do, uh, leaving very little to um, to wonder about. Let's see. Then we have Micro Maestro, which is a music program. Let's you play songs you can see and hear. Transforms forms the chalkboard power pad and your computer system into a music machine. And this is what the overlay look, looks like for that one. And this one. I believe lets you play the chalkboard like a piano. Uh, that looks like about one and a half octaves, something like that. And I suppose we can try this cartridge out. takes a couple seconds
Very well done. Okay, and it lets you play the keyboard right away. You'll see, it's not polyphonic, one note at a time only. Um, but let's see, we've got, I think it's like um, an octave and a half, something like that here. Unfortunately, I don't really know how to play a piano. Oh, wait. It's polyphonic. I did not realize that. Listen to that. So let's try a quirk. You have to press fairly hard, but, uh, well, that's very interesting. I don't know of any other um, music programs for the Commodore that are polyphonic in that way. Well, let's see. Um, I'm not sure what all the icons are for here, but it looks like it allows you to compose. You have load and save enter for your notes and play um, let's see if you clear the notes it clears the bar okay let's try to add a note so let's see a flart Sharp or flat? Let's see if we can... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You do it here. And, uh... Add an A. And then a rest. Another A. And... B. C. F and we'll play this. Hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. Play all. Okay. Clear it again. Maybe just a scale. Not a scale. Oh well. Play. Oh, there it goes. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that takes a while, doesn't it? Hmm. But then you can save it, and then maybe when you load it and play it again, it's a little faster. Well, here we are, uh, the power pad with its box. Um, on the back here it has uh, the types of programs that were made for it. Uh, let's see. This um, came about 1983. Uh, I found it uh, very interesting to play with. Um, I hope that uh, you all enjoyed the presentation, and thanks for Rob to Robert Bernardo for allowing me to play with this and figure it all out as best I could. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and have a good time at Convex.